The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. The mind of Pat Popolizio is a wondrous thing. And for you pack wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pack Mentality Poppins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Pack Mentality Pop-Ins Podcast. I'm your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Brian Reinhardt, and I'm joined by the leader of the Wolfpack, head wrestling coach, Pat Pabalizio. Good afternoon, Brian. Pat, we're recording this episode right after a brief Thanksgiving break. What were you up to this past weekend? Oh, it was good Thanksgiving. Nice to be in uh, in Raleigh, get to uh, relax a little bit, have some good food, and uh reflect a little bit and get ready for another stretch of practice competitions to the next break a lot of burgers no burgers that was bill and nick um i actually had thanksgiving a little earlier than uh thursday i got to go when we was up when we were up in new york got to spend a little extra time there so i got spoiled with some good home-cooked meal uh we celebrated that basically on uh sunday so i got it a couple days early and then uh Couple people were in town, so I had two good dinners in one week. Can't can't go wrong with that. But before that break, you guys had a spirited practice on Wednesday. Then you let the guys go home for a few days before returning to Raleigh. And when you had them together, you told them it was a good idea to get off their feet, take some time, and relax from wrestling. Your guys have been going hard from off season conditioning to preseason camp to the start of the season. I saw a lot of action. How important was this break for the guys, especially with these upcoming duels over the next few weeks? Yeah, this break was well needed. It was, it's very critical in our recovery and our training because we had, you know, when you look back, we had a lot of guys training for different competitions this past month. And then furthermore, we had a lot of guys competing over the summer. So there, there is no more downtime uh, with, with our team and different individuals. So we have to be strategic when we get days to, to recover and regroup and get ready for the next phase of training. And we were able to do that. You know, the half of our guys were, whether they were wrestling this summer or, you know, both Sean and Hayden going overseas with Adam wrestling there. So everybody was on different schedules. And the good thing about after Thanksgiving now is we all get in a routine and we're all back together uh, training on the same schedule, which will be nice over the next uh, several months. Now, Pat, I'm sure with some of your free time this past weekend, you went back into the archives and listened to some of your favorite episodes of the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast. This is our second season with the podcast, and we are still the only school nationally that hosts and produces our own podcast in-house. I know our Dive Hard fans know, but I think it's important a reminder here. We really appreciate all of our listeners each and every episode. We are not just an audio show on our school website. We take a lot of pride in this podcast and the reach that we have on so many platforms with this podcast. And we can be found on such things as iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Music Play, Podbean, just to name a few. World medalists, NCAA national champions, MMA world champions, pair of WWE Hall of Famers are just some of the guests we've had featured, including breaking down so much of the action for the current NC State wrestling team. So look for us and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We can be found in so many places, more than just our school website. So that's my whole spiel on our podcast. Appreciate everybody listening. Pat, back to wrestling action. You let me say my spiel, but we yeah. had the rest. We had the Wolfpack duels. Now we get in the portion of the schedule where you guys have just one opponent. In fact, NC State will have 16 duels with eight against top 25 squads before the ACC championships in March. How much do you look forward to duels as a head coach? Yeah, yeah, the, the schedule uh, is going to get pretty challenging throughout the year and get us ready uh, for the most important time. So that's kind of, you know, when you put this all together, you, you want to make sure you're in sync with training and then as well as getting every individual some type of competition that's going to make them better and prepare them for the end of the season. And, and you know, we're going to hit a lot of that, uh, some different individuals, get some different tournaments and then very high level duels. So. Yeah, it's different. You know, dual meets, 
I think are are very good for wrestling. They're what really creates a true fan base. So I think the diehard wrestling fans love tournaments, but I think you know your more casual fan is going to always like the dual meets because it's it's like a lot of other high level sporting events where you can you can show up. You're there for two hours, and then you know you're you're not there in a gym locked in all day. Difference with a tournament, and you know a lot of times tournaments will start at nine o'clock, finals will be at seven. So you're there a long, long day. And for a casual fan to show up for two hours, and some of these dual meets are very entertaining with a lot of stuff in between. And you know you try to make that an atmosphere, and I think that's the difference right now between duels and tournaments. And hopefully, at some point, we can continue to figure out to make these dual meets really evolve and, and make our sport a little more uh, interesting when it comes down to the end of the season. So we'll leave that to the, the higher ups to do that, but we, we need to continue to grow that. I know here in Raleigh, our fan base has grown tremendously and that's strictly because of a lot of dual meets, obviously some good individuals having success, but at the end of the day, people are coming to watch uh, NC state wrestling. And before we get into your current team and previewing the upcoming road duel at Old Dominion, I wanted to ask you about a couple of your past All-Americans who will also be in action this weekend. The American Wrestling League is a new venture to showcase freestyle matchups with former college stars. The first event is Friday, November 30th in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and the Wolfpack will be featured in two of the 10 bouts. Former All-American Tommy Gant will take on Richie Lewis, formerly of Rutgers, at 74 kilograms. And last year's 197-pound national champion Michael Machiavello will wrestle Wynn, who is an actual an MMA guy, goes at 92, still involved in wrestling. And I should mention a third member of the Wolfpack RTC, Duke's Jacob Casper, will also be in action. What are your thoughts on a wrestling event like this? And Tell us a little more on the development of both Tommy and Mock training at the Wolfpack RTC. I think it's a great event. You know, you look at this, this is a, a really a true all-star meet, you know, and it is going to be one where you get to see these guys showcase their skills. And then I think it's going to be very enjoyable atmosphere, exciting kind of the way they set these dual meets up. But I like it. I think it's it keeps these guys motivated, keeps them sharp, keeps them training for a purpose. I notice our intensity in our regional training center practices have gone up because there's a little bit on the line. You know, these guys now are uh, they're professional, so they get to wrestle and get bonus money for wins. And uh, I love it. I love the fact these guys earn what they get, and uh, it keeps them really evolving and, and training hard. And, uh, you know, that's one thing you see right now is Tommy Gant right on the cusp of making one of these national teams. I know this year is going to be his breakthrough year. I think he's been extremely disappointed on uh, where he left off at the end of the season. So hungrier than ever. He's ultra motivated. Machiavello, just talked to him yesterday about it, you know, and he got wrestles NCAs, goes to the UW23, wins that, then can't wrestle and has been training, you know, with Team USA for the this whole summer. So watching him wrestle with uh, – Quiz in the room the other day. I mean, both of them were were scrapping hard. So they, these guys have improved a lot, and they don't get many opportunities now to showcase these in uh, in the U.S. Let alone in a dual meet like this, where a lot of eyes of former fans watching them. So it'll be good for these guys to get out there and uh, show show what they're capable of doing. And obviously, having Casper, you know, coming in here training at times, and then being being out there as well, it would be fun because these guys all get to train together, and you see the improvement that they make. So I'm looking forward to, to tuning in and watching that as well. And if you're interested in watching Tommy and Mock compete in the American Wrestling League, trackwrestling.com will be streaming this event on Friday, November 30th. But before that event takes place, the NC State wrestling team returns to dual action with a trip up to Old Dominion for a duel on Thursday, November 29th at 7 p.m. ODU will be providing a live broadcast of the duel for our fans to watch, so visit their official website. And, of course, we will be there live with coverage on Twitter at PackWrestle. NC State Wolfpack is ranked number seven this week in the coaches' poll, the 46th straight week ranked in the top ten. Fifth straight season, you guys are matching up with ODU for a November duel. Now, NC State has won the previous four, but ODU has been proven to be a tough matchup for some of you guys in the past with some very close scores. In fact, last year, ODU won three of the first four bouts in Reynolds and took an 11-3 lead before NC State closed the duel with three straight bonus wins. Quick bus trip up to Norfolk, but it's going to be a hostile environment. 
They're trying to put together a blackout. So you guys are going to have to be ready from the start. No doubt about it. Uh, you know, Steve Martin does a phenomenal job. He's been there for quite a while. Uh, it's one of those dual meets. Started out when I was at Binghamton, um, and it, you know, started as a little bit of a rivalry, going back and forth. They dominated for a while, and then, you know, we got to where we can compete with those guys. And now being down here, we wanted to keep that tradition going. And it's one of those duels. Always look forward to because those guys do. They wrestle hard. They got a lot of good quality kids. And you, the best part about it is the atmosphere. You go into places like that. You know, they follow wrestling, and uh, we need that. We need a early test right now see where we're at and this is our true first duel where we're one-on-one -on -one with the team so we need to be ready to compete and uh, look forward to some some key matchups in this duel meet and most of the starting lineups been set for a few weeks but there's still a few weight classes where you guys had to make some decisions and also just the fact that some individuals like sean files hayden highly they had international competitions as well so this will be the first duel where the complete team is together where do you feel your squad is going into these three duels here before the holiday break? Yeah, we need to get a little momentum going. Uh, it's nice to have everybody finally back on the same page. Like I said, we're all in the in the room training together now. You know, before some of these guys were doing some some freestyle, uh, but having everybody here together, I think that's critical and it's key to to continue to develop this team. But yeah, it'll it'll be uh, it'll be nice to have these guys that have that experience traveling with us and competing with us because, you know, that always helps when you get ready for dual meets, some of the new new faces in the lineup, you know, look for that leadership, and that's what you're going to see with these guys being back. And, you know, they bring that experience, and they've been in some some tough atmospheres, tough dual meets, and, and we need uh, to learn from those guys, and that's what we're looking for, the leadership qualities in these guys as we get ready to compete in these three dual meets in the next several weeks. And as I mentioned, Sean Faz was in Romania along with Hayden for USA Wrestling for the U23 World Championships just a couple of weeks ago. And Sean came home with a silver medal competing in freestyle. Moving forward, what's your plan for him? Yeah, hats off to Sean for, uh, you know, getting that call kind of a little bit last minute and uh, embracing that challenge and going in there. And, and he really zoned in, focused, uh, you know, because he had to take some time off this summer healing up from NCAAs and going off of probably four weeks of training, you know, and a lot of times in our sport, if you, you don't have the training you want, your confidence level isn't always where it's at, but Sean, you know, mentally is always zoned in and, and did a phenomenal job going out there and competing. Cause I know it's one of his goals to win a world title. And this experience is very valuable for him. So yeah, we're, uh, we're looking forward to having him in our lineup. Uh, he will be wrestling in the month of December uh, as we zone in on uh, still working on some folk style stuff and, and just getting back in rhythm. But, yeah, you'll see him before the semester's out. He'll be wrestling 125 pounds, and, you know, he'll bring that experience and fight and everything that we're looking for in our program that's going to elevate um, where we're at. And, and I'm excited to have him back in our lineup and contribute with the, the rest of these guys that are going to be here. You really emphasized 125. Was yeah. that for some people that had Yeah, that's for anybody there? that questions what weight he's going to wrestle. He will be at 125 pounds this year, and he will not miss a single meal. He eats five meals a day. For anybody that wants to know how to diet and do it as a professional, I'm sure when it's all said and done, Sean will give you his secrets, but I can promise you he probably eats more than me and you um, and does it the right way, and that's what makes him as good as he is. And... It's one of those, he is big for the weight class, and he's strong and powerful, and sometimes that's what you need to win. And that's what I love about Sean. He's, he's, it, he, it means that much to him that he's willing to make these sacrifices and uh, commit to putting himself and our team in the best position to win a national title. NC State really has two starters at 125. Both Sean and redshirt freshman Zerk Storm will be in the starting lineups for duels this season. And against ODU, the Monarchs feature a tough matchup right off the bat at 125. Sophomore Michael McGee is currently ranked 19th nationally. He was an NCAA qualifier last year, the MAC conference champion, the MAC freshman of the year. And he took Sean to OT. So if Zerk gets that call up to the lineup, he has to be excited for this early season test. And it has to be exciting for you to just see him out there and see him compete. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about it. And we have a very valuable option with Zerk. I wouldn't count him out either. Uh, we got. 
a lot of really good competitive 25 pounders. So it's a good problem to have right now. But uh, I know you're a big stat guy. So if you dig into our archives, you'll know that those two, Zerk Storm and McGee, wrestled uh, in an open tournament in the beginning of the year. I think it was at the Hoagie Open. So uh, Zerk getting that win. So we're very familiar with what we need to do at 125 pounds. And it is. It's going to be a very tough test regardless who wrestles for us. And we know uh, that's a kid, obviously, that's, it's got a lot of good quality wins, and it's one that we better be ready to wrestle right off the rip. And uh, I look forward to that test. That's a true test right away for either one of our guys to see where we're at. And uh, that's, again, that's one of the guys when we got to schedule Old Dominion that was like, you know, you look forward to those kind of matches when you get to wrestle one of the better guys and, and really test your skills. And that's something we're going to see Thursday night. Monarchs feature returning All-American at 141 in Perry, who transferred from Eastern Michigan after they chose to discontinue their program after he became the school's first All-American since 1999 this past March. But Perry's ranked number 10 this week. And across the map for you guys, we could be seeing one of the Morrises, uh, Jamal Morris, up at 141.9 last year, down to 141. But this could be Jamal's first duel of the season. What do you look for in that matchup? Yeah, that's that's one of those matches. Again, you know, you get a chance to wrestle a returning All American. We have you know guys that have done it on our team, and they've obviously have him wrestling at 141. So, you know, it's it's one you get to go out and see where you stand with the, one of the best kids in the country. Uh, Place him from a year ago. You know, if you can hang in there and, and get a win off a guy like that, that you're you're making big strides, and you're going to put yourself in position this year to do the same. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a good test for us there. It's one of those matchups I'm really looking forward to because I think both are, you know, on both sides, whoever we wrestle and, and obviously at 141 pounds for Old Dominion, that's going to be a dynamic match. I, f- I feel like it's going to be a pretty high scoring match and uh, it'll be good. It'll be good for us to get tested to see exactly what we need to work on. Jumping up to 157, we could see a top 10 battle as number two, Hydley, and number nine, Larry Early, could face off for the second straight season. Uh, last year, Hayden got his first signature win of the young season as he downed early in the duel. But Hayden started the season with a top 10 win and a title at the Hokie Open, then went with Sean to Romania for the U23s. He was training both folk style and freestyle leading up to that tournament. Our fans did not get to see him in home action yet, so... What are you expecting from Hayden now going into another top 10 battle? It's one of those, you know, we've got a good, great opponent again. Uh, Hayden lives for these kind of matches. He's a true competitor, and he likes to wrestle high-level guys. So um, this is one that he's very excited for, and, and I think it goes back to his early days of competing. I think he's, you know, taken some some losses too, so he knows he needs to be ready. He, he did get you know, I think the first win in his career last year in the dual meet, so he knows who he's up against and what he needs to do, and he's not going to take anything lightly and is well aware of the history these two guys have had from their high school days to college. And, uh, you know, anytime you have that history, it can make for an interesting match. But I know he's Hayden's very motivated to make sure, you know, he gets some of these wins back from uh, his high school days and is going to, you know, wrestle really hard and and aggressive, and that's going to make for a good match because both guys do. They like to put up points, and uh, I know he's very excited for this match, and I am too, coming off of, you know, we, we had an open tournament and then coming back from the world championships and now just getting back in sync with uh, with the season, so it'll be good to get get the ball rolling here. I think 165 pounds could be a bit of a – under the radar battle with a pair of wrestlers battling to be ranked in the top 20. Redshirt sophomore Thomas Bullard cracked the top 20 by both Intermat and Flo after hit, winning his weight class in the Wolfpack Wrestling Club Open a couple weeks ago. And he faces veteran uh, senior Sheldon Wright, a two time NCAA qualifier that's ranked in the top 25 by track wrestling. But Thomas redshirted last season after he was an NCAA qualifier at 157 as a true freshman. What kind of jump do you expect from him this season? Yeah, it's a good matchup for us. I think this is going to be a, this is what makes wrestling fun. I think you got two different styles out there wrestling, and I think it's going to be good for us to see what kind of improvements we've made. But again, you know, all these guys that you're talking about, these guys have have valuable experience and matches that we got to be ready for, and it's one that I'm really excited to see and see the progress we've made this off season, coming off a red shirt. Um, this will be a good test for us right away, and uh, I, 
I think it's one of those where we got to continue to do what we're good at, control the match, and put ourselves where we're at best in these uh, these type of matches. And obviously, creating these scrambles and making it a high pace match is is really what it comes down to for. Anybody that wants the advantage in the style matchups, you know, that's got to work in our favor, and we got to push that action. And uh, I'm looking forward to this because it is going to be a nice two different styles of wrestling, and uh, we'll see who comes out on top. But I like where we're at right now and the progress we've been making. As a head coach, do you have to mention anything about competing on the road against a hostile crowd, whereas competing against home where you do in the starting lineups and anything? Or does it not – really matter for a wrestler too much it matters a lot you know and i think that's one thing we do is really well as a program we make our and we talked about it yesterday a little bit we make our environment and our practice room very challenging at times and we focus a lot on the mental side of things so when we do get put in these tough environments um we're prepared for it as best we can i mean at the end of the day experience will prepare you more than anything but we work a lot on the mental side of things and we talk to our guys and you know it's it's one of those you can't really prepare for to that exact situation, but you can do some mental things to get yourself focused and to block out certain things. And the guys that can do that are the ones that are going to put themselves in the, the advantage. And uh, I like where we're at mentally with this team. I think they've all had high-level experience in tough places, and um, I don't think we'll see too many guys fall victim of, of the environment that they're competing in. Well, Pat, I'm excited for this road duel. I reserved my seat on the bus, and since you guys are heading up about 10 hours early, plenty of time for all of your guys to listen to this episode of the Pack Mentality Pop-Ins Podcast and get mentally prepared, huh? Are you, uh, you are making the trip? I uh, Yes. Good. Are you going to bring those new beautiful headphones you got that you refuse to use in this podcast that sit on the table? I cannot listen to myself talk to myself with headphones uh, all right well you look professional with them all. i tried the first time i tried the headphones it didn't right. work out too well but this week's interview i sat down with redshirt freshman zerk storm and aj Lighton. we talked about their time on the redshirt circuit last season now both are vying for time in that lineup zerk at 20, 125 and aj at 149 we talked a little bit about Zerk earlier, but how has AJ progressed during his time in your practice room? Tremendously. I mean, he's a leader right now for his class that he's in. You know, he leads by example. He's a great kid off the mat, you know, doing very good in school, very motivated individual, very disciplined. When you define what we're looking for in a program, he fits it to a T. And uh, we didn't, he didn't start, you know, he comes off this redshirt year and he, and he, he worked extremely hard to improve and we, you look where he came in at and where he's at now the progress has been tremendous and it was a little disappointing because you know the first couple of weeks in the season wasn't him and we moved him up from 41 to 49 and now we get to see truly you know his skills and uh what he's about and how he wrestles and winning our open i think was a huge step in the right direction for him because he's that good and i look forward to him continuing to improve and uh He's going to be a, a major player in our program and find himself wrestling a lot in our NC State singlet. I want to remind our fans, after the trip up to ODU, the Wolfpack will be returning home to action in Reynolds Coliseum for a pair of duels before the holiday break. NC State will host in-state rival Appalachian State on Tuesday, December 4th at 7 p.m. And then number 12, Nebraska, comes to Raleigh on Sunday December 16th at 1 p.m. Record number of season tickets have been sold, but we want to pack rounds even more. So please visit gopack.com slash buy tickets to reserve your seat today. And Pat, before I get you out of here, I have to mention the NCAA ticket deadline is this Friday, November 30th. Fans that want to travel up to Pittsburgh for the NCAA championships in March and sit in the NC State section must put in their ticket request Pat, how can fans join the NC State ticket allotment? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, there's been a ton of interest for NCAA tickets. I think right now we have over 500 requests for tickets. Uh, the tricky thing is we don't get our, we know we get so many tickets on the lower bowl this year off of last year's placement. That's how the NCAA does it. Um, and we're thankful to actually get guaranteed number down on the lower bowl. And we're going to stay loyal. You know, I think at the end of the day, you got to stay loyal to the people that have been loyal to you. 
and the people that have been back in our program and and we're going to go top priority to donors first and then obviously family and they'll fall on the same level make sure any family members get their tickets um but yeah we gotta you know like any other program you gotta stay loyal to the people that are backing you uh we do have a lot of new interests so uh you know the people that have been involved will will make sure that they get their needs met but it's going to be tough this year i think the demand being in pittsburgh and pa you know, I think it's going to be hard to get tickets. Uh, I guarantee you the second they get released, every ticket will be sold out and people will be scrambling the best they can to, to find their way into the NCAA tournament, which is a good problem. You know, selling out the NCAA tournament, I think, is great for our sport and uh, continue to grow, and it's it's looking forward to that. The person that is responsible threatened me not to give out the email. So who should they email to get these tickets? I said that this person, I'm making Pat say it, not me. I would recommend that they email anybody on our wrestling staff and we'll direct them into the right person to get their answers questions so they can pick from there. How about that? Can you give out your cell phone number for this? You want to give out cell phone? Well, numbers? you have two. I only have the number to one of them. Yeah. I have the one I have the one that you don't answer. Yeah, well, you're crazy. I we can I can show you I can screenshot this. You know that, right? I don't know if we want some of these uh, questions on there. We haven't introduced the video aspect of the podcast quite yet. Okay. But, Pat, good luck about it to you. It's going to be great. You guys starting these duels. Then you're coming back to Reynolds for a couple. So a lot of December action before this holiday break. Yeah, it'll be nice to uh, get this duel meet in Thursday, travel up with the team. And, obviously, we're thankful you're coming with us. We'll make sure you get everything you need. Uh, I'm doing my on, best. On the road. We'll get you some food and per diem. Oh, sweet. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be back in action at home. Obviously, wrestling in-state rival, great team, John Marks, uh, App State. And then having Nebraska at home, you know, that's going to be a great way to end the semester in a huge duel and uh, some, some high-level wrestling because I'm sure between both teams we get to see at home, we're going to hit a lot of good ranked guys. So I'm looking forward to that challenge. Now stay tuned for this week's featured interview. We're now joined by a couple of new voices to the podcast, a couple of wrestlers that NC State fans will be getting to see in a red and white singlet for the first time this season, redshirt freshman Zurich Storm and A.J. Lighton. Zurich, A.J., welcome to the podcast. Glad we could catch you guys right after practice. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, I will say we gave you guys a little bit of time to collect yourselves. What was practice like this morning? You, you can get it. You can um, get it. I mean, practice, it was uh, quick but hard. We uh, did a little review and on top, and then we uh, drilled for a little, and then we got into live wrestling and did some conditioning after. Zurich, you're a 125-pounder from New Oxford, PA. Right off the bat, I have to ask, Zurich, it's a really, it's an unusual name you don't hear. How did it come about? Uh, so I get this question a lot. Well, my parents just told me, it, so my brother's name is Slade, uh, so they couldn't really have like a Tom or something like that, a common name. So my name was the last name in the baby book. So have you or your family ever been to Zurich, Switzerland? We have not. Do you have a desire to go? I do. Okay. I've been to Lucerne. Switzerland is pretty cool. AJ, Fort Myers, South Carolina. You've seen action at 141 and 149 already this year. What's AJ stand for? AJ stands for Alexander James. And actually it's Fort Mill, South Carolina. What did I say? Did you say Fort Myers? I said Fort Mill. I think. He did? <laughs> I don't know. All right. We're off to a spectacular start. It's our first time, man. It is. Redshirt freshman. You guys are really thrown here in the hot seat, but <laughs> you guys are classmates. And after a redshirt season, great time for you guys to join us on the podcast. A little bit of a different background between you guys as well, at least I think. Uh, one is from a wrestling hotbed in Pennsylvania. The other from a southern state in South Carolina where high school wrestling's growing, but maybe not now. So, Zurich, I'm going to start with you. Where is Oxford, and what was your high school wrestling career like in Pennsylvania? So, New Oxford, when I tell people where I'm from, they really don't know where it's at. So, I just say, depending on traffic, I'm five, ten minutes from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. But uh, growing up, uh, I mean, the wrestling community was always there. Uh, I mean, I fell in love with it since I was three years old. I've been on the mat, but... Uh, I mean, still to this day, I mean, people say Pennsylvania wrestling has died down, but I still think it comes off as the toughest state for wrestling. And 
So, I mean, I think I come from a very good state of wrestling, so and I'm proud of it. AJ, on the other end of that, what was high school wrestling like for you in South Carolina? Uh, yeah, so not – I would say, yeah, obviously the competition level is not the same as, like, a Pennsylvania or a hotbed, like, those kind of states. Um, so to, like, get the exposure, a lot of us, we have to – do well, I guess, at the national levels, the national level to get exposed. Because, I mean, obviously, we have uh, wrestling colleges in South Carolina, but as a whole, we're not as tough. And, yeah, we're growing, but we do have really good individuals throughout the state. Like, every other weight class, there'll be a really good kid that's, like, known nationally. But, yeah, it it was kind of hard. I'm originally from New York, so, I mean, I, like, was growing up my dad wrestled and all my brothers wrestled so like i always was around wrestling but it was hard like going around trying to um get that exposure to get noticed for college wrestling i was gonna say i know college coaches will find athletes and it's a little different from pa but how was the recruiting process for you coming from south carolina um yeah it was a little different i had i know like now that i'm here i can see the recruiting process because we have like recruits come in but it was definitely more like i had to reach out i guess it was nice having club coaches that wrestled in college so um they had a nice contact back and forth between like coaches that i could get in touch to and uh the way i actually got in touch here i actually wrestled in a tournament in raleigh so it was nice for able to see the coaches able to watch me wrestle and then uh then see the results i get and get in touch with them and I'll put this question to both of you. What made you decide NC State was the college for you and that you wanted to wrestle here? Um, I would say for me, NC State was the first recruiting trip that I took. And I had to compare every after all of the other recruiting trips. I kind of sat back down. I was like, I was just comparing everything back to NC State. And I was like, oh, well, NC State has better this. NC State has better that. And it was a pretty easy decision for me to make to come here. Zer? So for me, this was, I think, the second to last school that I visited. And um, for me, it was where I was going to be able to get a a good education and uh, where I felt like home was to me. So I picked here because I felt like I was at home and like our team is a family. So that's what I came for. And we joke on the podcast here all the time about the red short circuit. NC State's been in a position in the last few years where most true freshmen, freshmen are now getting the chance to take a red shirt instead of jumping in right away. Both of you guys were in that position last year. Now the staff brought in so many freshmen this season, and many are following that route you guys did last year, taking a red shirt. Kind of talk about the red shirt season for wrestlers, the ups, the downs. You guys are still practicing. You're still lifting. You're going to all these open tournaments, but really you're a little under the radar and away from duels. So how was both of your mentality during a redshirt season? I would say I would say it is very hard. Um, try like you, I guess you have to have a lot of motivation for yourself going into practice because you're not getting I mean obviously the guy, the coaches like you and they work with you, but they they're more focused on the guys that are going to be out there wrestling for them in the NC State singlet. So it's it's hard to like motivate yourself going in each day like knowing that you might not get like the, I guess not like the looks, but like the coaches, like all over you, like they would be the starters. So I think a lot comes from that telling yourself, like they're not doing it on purpose. It's just, that's how it is. Like any red shirt probably throughout the whole NCAA is like this right now. And it's very difficult because you got to like plan your traveling out. Everything is not smooth. Everyone's, everything's kind of just like last minute jobs, kind of just like cutting your weight last minute. Um, getting to the hotel like late on Saturday night to wrestle Saturday, Sunday morning and all of that. And it kind of just adds up throughout um, the whole season. And by like our last tournament, we're just like, Oh gosh, like when's this Richard season going to end? Zerk ups, downs. I would have to say the ups was probably, I guess, uh, getting your feet. Like, I guess what people call getting your feet wet, like, because you're going to come in here, you're going to take your beatings when you come in here, so it's good to have a redshirt season to, you know, get your feet under you and everything. But definitely the downs, which the redshirts haven't done yet, is definitely a redshirt sprint. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Those definitely suck. <laughs> Can you guys do the redshirt sprints this year, even though you're not redshirts? 
We, I, we, we volunteered. Yeah, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> no. We, we, we could volunteer, but hopefully we, we don't have to. Um, but. During that redshirt season, you guys are in practice every day. You worked with a lot of our starters last year. Who are some of your training partners in the practice room this year? This year, uh, I work with Hay- Hayden. Uh, when I was at 141, I worked. I didn't work with Hayden as much, but now that I'm right back at 149, I'll start working with him. Um, and Kevin, I've been working a lot with Kevin and Coach Donnie this year, so they've been helping me a lot too. Is there a rumor Kevin Jack's up to about 174? Oh yeah, I don't. You're gonna call him out. Pat calls yeah. him out. Oh yeah, no, I'm. Yeah, we'll give a shout out to Kevin Jack. Uh, He's enjoying eating a little bit. I don't know if he'll bake it back down into the 50s ever again. (laughs) And Zarek, who are you kind of working out with in the practice room? I wrestle with Tariq uh, Camacho, and uh, sometimes I'll roll around with Justin Oliver. So, uh, and then sometimes I get a hold of Obi and Donnie. So, Obi still got some moves. He's a little older, but yeah, Obi still got the slick moves. He (laughs) he tries to switch up his style of wrestling every once in a while. He'll go the American, the European, the different styles and we've only had three duels thus far but both of you seen action in them as well as some early season tournaments and aj did i read nc state started the season up in new york was that your first time on an airplane it that was okay so when i was like four i rode an airplane but i don't i don't consider it because i have no clue what it was like so yeah flying to new york was my first time Technically not my first time, but for me, my okay. first time flying on an airplane. Nervous, didn't care, same as in um, the trip? I wasn't nervous until everyone on the team found out. So <laughs> when we got on the airplane, uh, Sam Leakian told the flight attendant on both of the planes that we took up there that it was my first time flying. So on the first flight, they thought that I was eight years old and it was my first time flying. So they congratulated me on that. <laughs> and then on the next one, they said, uh, they told me to raise my hand so they could give me a present. And I, ra- I rose my hand and they came and gave me a throw up bag. So it was, it was a warm welcoming. But <laughs> after all, I, I enjoyed it. It was good. A lot better than driving. I was going to say, Redshirt Circuit, you guys logged a lot of miles in a lot of cars. Yeah. Was the plane trip a little bit of a relief for you guys that first weekend? Oh, yeah. For yeah, sure. it was. And, sir, you're at 125 right now. Everybody knows about Sean Foss's weight cut kit down. Is there a weight cut for you? Uh, I would say yes, there's a weight cut for me, but it's not as serious as it is for him. So, Comfortable weight cut, no issues? Uh, comfortable. We had, we had a scare <laughs> <laughs> first <laughs> tournament, but we got down there. <laughs> and you're kind of in a pretty unique position. Our fans are going to get to see you in the lineup in duels this year, but we also have Sean Foss, who's a little more selective in the weigh-ins. How do you keep mentally prepared as to who's going to be in the lineup for duels? Um, for me, I just meant to prepare myself every day in the practice room. And, um, I coaches tell me the same thing. Just, you know, they tell everyone, if you want to be the guy, just keep working your butt off. So, I mean, that's what I just keep doing. I'm just going to keep working and working and then wherever, whoever coach puts out there. So he puts out there for that day. So, And AJ, you kind of saw some action at 41 to start the year. Now seeing action at 49 more comfortable weight at 49 or what was your thought about that yeah um so the end of last year we made the decision that i was gonna go down to 41 and uh i made the cut weight was fine uh i could make a 141 pretty easily i ate right i did it right but towards the end of matches uh i I don't know i've never really cut weight before i'm guys on my team cut a lot more weight than me i'm not saying like i was complaining or anything like those guys do a lot do a great job on our team that cut weight, but uh, just wasn't the right fit for me. I felt I feel a lot better at 149. Uh, I have a gas tank throughout my matches, and I think that's where I'm going to stay for the rest of the year. You guys are coming off some time away from Raleigh for Thanksgiving. Where or what did you guys do that you had an entire weekend off? Should be easy because it, it's Monday here, so we're asking this after Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> I mean, I flew home. I uh, visited some family and uh, went shopping a little and with my family as well. And then flew back here Saturday night and practiced Sunday. AJ, are you flying home? Oh, I'm not. I'm uh, all, I, have, I might have the quickest drive. I'm only like two and a half hours okay. away. So I got to actually drove home right after practice uh, on Wednesday. 
got home, got to see the family, uh, had a great Thanksgiving dinner, and then uh, went right back up here on uh, Saturday night. I was going to say, for me, I love Thanksgiving. I like to eat and watch football all day. I asked Pat last year his thoughts on it for you guys, and he said it's really your responsibility not to indulge too much. As wrestlers, can you guys enjoy Thanksgiving? Do you want to admit on the podcast that wrestlers actually eat? Yeah, I will. I eat on Thanksgiving. You just got to be disciplined about it. Yeah, uh, and my, uh, I actually need to eat a lot more than the normal person. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little light for my weight class right now, but so I need to eat up. But in past years, yeah, if, you just got to be disciplined in what you're eating on Thanksgiving, and you'll be all right. I know you guys are rich or freshmen, but you're both majoring in sports management. Very early in A academic careers. And AJ, congrats. You were on the ACC academic honor roll last year. Thanks. Zurich, I didn't see your name. I looked. Next year. But uh, <laughs> next year, any career ambitions yet? Um, I've always wanted, I've always been a sports fan since a young age. So I love the thought of being an athletic director for at the high school level. Um, but I also like when I first came here, I was undecided. So I like criminology part. So maybe further down the road, getting back into that or something like that too. Yeah, for me as well, would be an athletic director, but I'd like to do it at the college level. Or high school, it doesn't really matter to me. We're going to do something we haven't done on the podcast for a while. Great chance since you guys are brand new. I got my notebook out of questions. We've asked some of your teammates these questions previously, but just some quick rapid fire questions to tell us the first answer that comes to mind. All righty. Favorite cardio machine? Treadmill. Stair stopper. This is my favorite question because the, the guy that was the answer last year graduated so we need a new answer messiest locker michael machiavello won by a landslide last year nick Renan. no the bullers i'd have to say bullers can you tell them apart so you know which one's messy uh, i would have to say daniel's locker okay. is a little messier than thomas's dude i don't know i can't even think clean, in, could be a clean locker room yeah I, th- I think we're we made it pretty clean since last year <laughs> oh, i can't think if you were not on the wrestling team, what sport we would you have tried in college? Oh, college golf. Make some big bucks. Rugby. Rugby. Yeah. Did you play it before up in Pennsylvania? I have not. No? Just like to get out there and hit people? Yeah. <laughs> that, that that answer threw me off. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Do you guys have a go to restaurant in Raleigh during the off season? Yes. Oh, I can't even think of the name. Uh, what is the name? Why can't I think of the name? Oh, dude, it's right on Hillsborough. It's the Mexican restaurant. It starts with a G. Dude, I can't think of it. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> well, they're not a sponsor of the podcast. All right. Well, then now I'm going to go with Dave Dump- Dave's Dumplings, but until I think of the other name. Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's. Wow. Huh. Simple taste. If you guys have a homework question, who are you going to ask on your team? Sam Leakin. Yeah, either Sam or Sean. You guys have a favorite TV show you like to binge watch during that red shirt circuit? Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec's my new show. Love that show. I would have to say I'm still watching Rick and Morty. It's like my fourth time. Okay. Best social media follow on the team or coaching staff? Hayden's got a good one. Gwiz has got a good one. Sam's got a good one. I don't know. I wouldn't say someone that just puts them up. Quiz produces a little too much. Oh, he does. It's hard to keep up. I don't know. I would say no one that's just out like crazy okay. over the other person, but there's some good on the team. Yeah, I mean, Nick Green's weight cut tweets are pretty funny. Those are good. Those <laughs> are real funny. And last one, the NC State wrestler that can make you crack up in a second. Oh, this is hard. I don't know. I, lately, it's been Kellen. Kellen Devlin. Anything that comes out of his mouth lately, I've been just dying laughing. Yeah. I might have to go with that, too. I don't... Sam. I don't know. Living with Sam is hard, so anything he says, I laugh at. So. <laughs> are you guys roommates at all? We are yeah. roommates. Okay. Have we bickered, fight? We get along all the time? We're, we're good. Yeah, we're yeah. good. We don't really have any reasons to fight. We're not in the same weight class or anything <laughs> like that, so... Do wrestlers wrestle at home as much as they wrestle in practice? I don't know. No, no, no not really. Okay. Urban wrestling. <laughs> but Zurich, AJ, 
I want to thank you guys for hustling after practice, being on the podcast. The NC State wrestling team is going to have so many new faces this season. So I'm glad our fans got the chance to hear from you guys a little bit as we begin the year. And interview went pretty well. So we might be having you guys on yet again this Ooh, season. Awesome. Right, thank you. Can't Appreciate wait. it. Oh, I remember the restaurants, Gonza. Gonza, there's your shout out. Pay the podcast some money for the sponsorship. There we go. <laughs> but I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Poppins podcast covering all things NC State Wrestling. Until next time, Wolf Pack Wrestling fans, go Pack. The Pack Mentality Poppins podcast is produced by the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to matttalkonline.com.